Hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, here we go. They're starting to come in. Yeah, we have five attendees. Nicholas, you gonna start us off? Sure, are we waiting for three or? No, 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 go, go for it. We, okay. got, we got 10 minutes. Okay, the intro. Hi, Dan, I say, Nicholas, uh, Danny, could you uh, allow me to share my screen? So I just have the slides. Uh, so I could just put them on, put on the slides as well. Oh, good. We'll just get started, I think. And good. everybody is kind of coming yeah, yeah, in yeah. and we'll, we'll just intro everything and uh, get it all started, I guess. Yeah, it's a, go ahead and show your slides. Uh, it says I'm still disabled. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, okay. Uh, I, that's my problem. Let me fix it real quick. So we're going to do uh, some demonstrations uh, for volume, and we've all got different models, and then we'll probably do a couple of minutes of just introducing our favorite models, and uh, then uh, we'll go into some Q&A um, in the last portion. Hi, everyone. Welcome to... Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. We're going to help you understand a little bit more about elastomerics, how to choose a safer, better, and more comfortable mask. Um, so I'm not, if you're not familiar with elastomerics, they've actually been used for virus uh, protection since the mid-90s. The CDC started using them in uh, infectious disease hospitals to protect healthcare workers from uh, drug-resistant tuberculosis, which is the same history as N95. So they both started using it. Where it branched off between N95s and elastomeric respirators is hospitals that rarely saw infectious patients had the disposable version, which was a little bit more expensive. And the hospitals which saw uh, virus patients with the infectious diseases on a daily basis used elastomeric respirators because they offered more protection as well as they were cost effective for using it all the time. So that's why when SARS hit, hospitals ended up using N95s and elastomerics were not well known. It's because hospitals are just familiar with the disposables because they don't often use elastomerics enough before this pandemic for it to be worth it for them. But now with the duration of the pandemic, we see it's useful. So basically what makes an elastomeric different than N95s or N99s or N100s is they're made of silicone material. They're reusable from months to years. And they have filters that you change in between one, one month and one year, depending on the manufacturer. Now you can have three different levels of filters for an elastomeric. You can have uh, equivalent of an N95 filter, an equivalent of an N99 filter, or an equivalent of an N100 filter. And the N99 and N100 filters are shown to provide 100% protection from even the most, for even the most at-risk healthcare worker, which is why the UK and other countries are starting to use more elastomerics. And depending on where you are in the world, the filters might be called FFP2s, P2s, FFP3s, P3s, and they might even have KN95 filters depending on, or KF94 filters depending on what part of the world you're from. Uh, there's more than 20 different manufacturers around, and they're recommended as N95 alternatives. Uh, a couple different types of elastomerics is there's some with valves and some without valves, like this one you see I have. Now, it used to be assumed that if an elastomeric respirator had an exhalation valve, the virus could just freely come out if you're infectious. Now the CDC studies came out and they actually studied this and they showed that even if the exhalation valve is not covered, it'll actually provide you more protection than a surgical mask for source control and spreading it to others. But there are also other options if it does have a valve, which is cover the valve with a surgical or cloth mask. And you can also go with the new types with don't have exhalation valves at all. So that way you have optimal protection for both the person wearing it and those around them. Um, I guess, uh, now we'll start demonstrating the different types of elastomerics. Uh, just for me. So welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are from. It's sort of a multi time zone crowd. Uh, so our agenda today is like we introduce you a bit to, about the elastomerics history. So that was Nicholas providing you with the background of what elastomerics are. And then we jump right into demonstrations of some models. Uh, followed by Q&A so that uh, you can 
uh, ask yourself questions that uh, you might have in your head and bothering you. Uh, you'll observe that I'm doing this with the mask on. So I, I wanted to use that as a confidence building measure that you can hear me clear enough, even with the mask on. I'm just using some gear belts. Uh, I'm not doing very pricey ones. So a bit about the mask protection, etc. This is again compiled by Nicholas. And as I said, uh, they give you a bit, lot of protection, good fit and they're usable. So this is my personal sort of list of why I like elastomerics. Uh, they're comfortable because they are not tugging on my ears. They're sort of, it's based on the head. Uh, better fit because I don't really have to have a professional grid fit testing because of the material here, the silicone material or the elastomeric material, it's uh, more likely to fit your Fish, they better or mold around it. It's more breathable, I think. These filters, they have this kind of pleated filter, so it's a lot more surface area than an N95. It, so the filters are very similar to looking to what we have in HVAC, which sort of makes me like them more because my background is in as an HVAC engineer. Uh, that makes them more breathable. And because they're usable, so it's less rest. Uh, I sort of shifted to elastomerics instead of going with single use ones because I also have issues with a bunch of different allergies and I thought okay this is gonna go on for some time plus even after that I would prefer to have something like this to give me some extra protection against dust pollen etc. So our agenda is to go on to the demonstrations unless uh, any of the panelists have anything else to say. Uh, so we will start off with the 3M masks, and that is with B. Hi, my name is B. Um, I am going to talk about 3M half face and full face masks. I've actually been wearing these on a pretty regular basis for about a decade because of my chronic illness. I have pretty severe asthma that, um, like I get asthma attacks when I'm around, um, when I'm smelling perfume or smoke, when I breathe it in. Um, so this is a lot clunkier and larger than a lot of the other respirators we're going to be showing you today, but I found that this is the safest for my asthma. So if you also have a respiratory illness, um, you might want to consider looking into one of these. I also have these special filters on them that help to filter out perfume. They also make different kinds of filters that are smaller, more lightweight, and cheaper that would be great for filtering out COVID or other airborne illnesses, or even just for filtering pollen and dust. Um, but these ones are made specifically to filter out um, vapors. So I use them to protect myself from uh, perfume. Um, so I can demonstrate how to put it on, how to fit it, and how to make sure that it is fully sealed. Um, I'm going to take off the filters first. So all you have to do is twist them, and then you can change on any filter that you want. And so this piece goes over your head. And basically all you have to do is tighten these elastic straps. I'm going to take off my headset so I can demonstrate. And then the way you can check the seal is you put it over and then you cover up the area where the filters are. If it's properly sealed, you shouldn't be able to get any air at all. And that would mean that when you have the filters on, it's filtering 100% of the air you breathe in, no, no gaps or any, anything on the sides, no air is coming in from the sides of the mask. It's all going through the filters first. Um, and now I'll show the full face mask. So if you, <laughs> if you are a healthcare worker or you are super high risk, you might want to consider this, um, especially, you know, it's like a combination face field, face shield and mask, basically. Um, and it works with the same kind of filters. It's the same little mechanism on the side. So all the same filters that work with the half mask will work with the full face mask. 
Um, and it's also very helpful, like if you have asthma, allergies, other respiratory conditions. Um, so for example, I have pollen allergies. A lot of times if I wear a cloth mask outside, I'm still having all my allergy symptoms. I'm sneezing, I have a runny nose. But when I wear this, I have absolutely no allergy symptoms. I don't have asthma attacks because it's filtering in all the air and none of the pollen or smoke or air pollution can get in. Um, I, oh, and just real quick about the filters. So these are P100 filters. It might be kind of confusing with all, all the neo ratings. There's the N, the R, the P, that basically stands for if it is not resistant to oils, if it's resistant to oils, or if it's oil proof. So if you're going to be in an environment um, where there are solvents or oils in the air, you might want to look for a P rated filter. Um, and since perfumes are, modern perfumes are often based on um, petrochemicals, like they're basically made of petroleum, that's why I use P100 filters. Um, but and, uh, they also make N, N99, N100, as Nicholas said earlier, those will filter out 99 or basically 100% of all the particles in the air. So they are much safer, even safer than N95. The number just indicates the percentage of particles over 0.3 microns that the, fil that the filters will filter through basically. Um, I think that's it. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask yeah, in I'd the like chat. To, um, add to that, uh, there's really an excellent description of the 3M uh, uh, products. Um, this is a similar product from 3M that uh, is a um, elastomeric half mask respirator and it uses a slightly different filter. Uh, these are the, um, these are, when you, when you see them on Amazon, they, they're usually bundled with this kind of filter, which is a P100 filter. Uh, I'm actually using a P95 filter because it's easier to breathe through. It provides a little less protection than the P100 filter, which is close to 100%. This is 95%, but it's easier to work with on a daily basis. It's not going to be as protective as the uh, uh, filters that uh, that uh, Dew is using, but it is at least giving you something equivalent to the N95, uh, uh, according to NIOSH. And I, so that, 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 that the choice is not obvious when you look at this, the way it's being sold on, on Amazon. So, so to, you have to look for specifically these, uh, these types of filters, which make them more breathable, but less protective. And for serious... Sorry, and for Sarah's question, all the filters uh, with the elastomerics will filter out COVID. It would just, some will filter out at a higher level. For example, That's the right. N95 filters at the same level as an N95, and then the N99s and 100s will filter at the same level as an N100 or N99. Yeah, the percentage is, uh, is what we're talking about, yeah. Um, and just a point of clarification, because this is a question that does come up, the percentage um, with P100 filters, it's not down to 0.3 microns. It's that it's, it's measured at 0.3 microns because that is the hardest particle size for a filter to capture. And most of these filters are effective, much more effective at sizes above 0.3 microns and below 0.3 microns. And Asit can explain um, the, the physics of this better than I can. So do you want to? Uh, maybe not a lot of physics, but as Aditi said, it's so there are different mechanisms when you're filtering. So filtering is different from training. So let's say if you have a, a sprainer for something that's uh, doing some something very different from what filter does. Uh, so filter can sprain. But there are other mechanisms inside which in, include diffusion, impaction, uh, electro, electrostatic attraction, a bunch of them. And so these uh, mechanisms act differently in different particle size ranges. And there appears to be one size range around say 0.1 to 0.3 microns where uh, particles are most likely to penetrate. And that's why the standardization comes at 0.3 microns. Okay, we will specify that's the most penetrating size particle size. So that's where we will say that, okay, this 99.97% effective at 0.3 micron. So it's like a U curve. It's So it's uh, bottom of the uh, minima is somewhere around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 microns, but both directions it is rising up. So the effectiveness is increasing in both directions, both the smaller ones, as well as the larger ones. 
I think I'd, I'd like to add to that one uh, minor clarification. I, I completely agree with everything that, that we just said. And uh, um, it, it's, it's very confusing for people initially to understand this. It was confusing for myself as well as people I talked to that the, uh, when they say 0.3 microns, it actually filters, likely to filter better in smaller particles than 0.3 microns because 0.3 microns is the hardest case. And that's why 0.3 microns was chosen as the test uh, because it, it needs a, you need a special kind of filtration called electrostatic filtration to uh, to capture those 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 point three micron particles uh, uh, using electric charges. With for the other particles, uh, smaller or bigger, it, the uh, the filter that can can capture them much easier, and that's why uh, point uh, there's so much focus on this point three microns, uh, whether it's bigger or smaller. Yeah, a good way to think of it is. The virus kind of uh, hitchhikes on an airborne particle, yeah. just like dust and other things will. And it's like a spider web. So it has to go through uh, the spider web to get to your lungs. And every time it goes through the spider web, the electrostatic charge will attract it like a magnet and then trap it in its fibers. And that's why N95s and, 100 and elastomeric respirators are so effective is because they also seal to the face. So all the air has to go through the filter well, with the surgical mask, it's sometimes there's gap on the top, the sides, the bottom. So even just a little tiny 1% gap will let half the virus particles through. And that's why surgical masks, while everyone wears them and they think they have a lot of protection, unless you brace it so all the air goes through the filter material, it doesn't actually offer you that much protection. Just another quick note about the fit. Um, there are different styles of these face pieces. Some are just um, plastic and they're harder. This one is silicone and it's easier to fit if you have a, a nose shape that doesn't work with a lot of other masks. So I have a kind of flat nose and a lot of other masks uh, gap around my nose because they're not designed for my nose shape. So using a silicone, looking for one that has a silicone piece that goes around your face. These also come in three different sizes. This is a medium. So you can also, you know, try on different sizes and make sure that they fit. Make sure you have that good seal when you place your hands over the, um, the hole where the filter attachment goes. Place your hands over and make sure you have that good seal. And can you show the inside for a sec? So we yeah. could see the, so if you actually look at where you breathe out in the middle, it's not just an open, like you sometimes hear people say, argue about not using elastomeric respirators. It actually does have to go through different materials before it actually goes and uh, to the outside air. So that's why it does work a lot better than a surgical mask to protect people from you if you are infectious while you wear it. You know, there's it's a, a question from, misunderstanding. The, from the Go audience uh, at Asit, have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen that, but I think I will, let's move on to GBS because it okay. relates to that. So I'll just hand over to Aditi uh, to talk about the GBS. Okay, hold on, let me get the GBS. I think I can address that question also. They should, um, it's more the filter rating, whether it's a 95, 99, or 100. The organic vapor only really makes a difference if you are looking to filter out perfumes or say if, if you're working in an industrial application or you're painting or something like that. If you want to filter out those fumes, that's why you would get the vapor cartridges. If you're not concerned about that, then you can just use any of the, you know, N99, N100, P99, P100. Or P95 or as well. Protection. Yeah, yeah. They, but those, each rating will have a similar level of protection. It doesn't matter whether it's organic vapor or not. If you're only concerned about COVID, then just look at the, the NIOSH yeah. rating. for the So 99 will be better than 95 and 100 will be better than 99. Right. So this is the GVS. It's a little bit more compact on the face than the 3M um, because it has filters that sit into the mask, but it's, it's very comfortable. This is, so this is actually the valve-less version. So when I take it off, I can show you the inside. The valve is, is the exhale valve is blocked. It has the physical exhale valve appearance, but it doesn't, yeah, I said, uh, so they have, they have the same version that has an open valve, and this is the valveless version. You just have to make sure that you select the right um, type, depending on what you want. Um, 
some of the issues, I mean, I live in a very hot and humid climate. And so I have considerably more uh, condensation inside my face piece. And it's a little bit easier when you do have an open exhale valve uh, versus one that is closed. But it's, the, I mean, it's a, it's a minor difference if you're not in that kind of uh, climatic region. Um, otherwise, it's an incredibly comfortable mask. And as Asit pointed out that this mask has a pleated filter versus um, you know, a filter like this, which is a, is a flat filter. Uh, so there's considerably more surface area for the air to come in through. And so it's, you know, there's minor difference there in breathability. And this is slightly more breathable than if you're using a flat filter. Um, um, this, this filter on the 3M is an encased uh, pleated filter. So there is a pleated filter on the inside as well. So that's another filter option. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a really simple mask to put on and take off. The straps are really comfortable. Um, they don't produce a lot of friction. They're kind of soft. Um, it's very easy to adjust and put on. And it's a, you know, it's, it's a secure fit without having to be too fiddly uh, about the mask. Um, yep. I think one thing I'd add to that is that the uh, the breathability, for, given that this is a P100 filter, uh, it's far more breathable than other P100s that I've tried, uh, and I, it's, it's almost magic. Uh, I'm not sure how they did it, but uh, it, it, uh, it it's so much more uh, usable on a on a on a daily or hourly basis than uh, whereas you know for other other masks you'd have to drop down to an, a 95% filtration. For this, it's it's not as not, it's not as breathable as a ninety five for me, but it's close, and I think that's what's impressive about it. Okay, guys, I'm going to be a bit stingy with time because we have lots of models to display. So I'm yes. going to move on to Dana. Okay, my name is Dana Ludwig, and this is a MSA twenty nine hundred uh, uh, advantage twenty nine hundred half mask. And uh, that's how easy it is to put on and take off. And also to give you an idea of uh, the degree to which it muffles your voice. Uh, so you can still speak to them. Uh, and uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to cover. First of all is the GVS that you just saw, the, uh, the one without a valve is uh, it's, uh, these are all quite affordable. The, um, the GVS is $27.81 and it includes the filters. Uh, yes. And then there's tax and shipping. And the MSA that I just showed you is $37 for the mask and $10 for a pair of filters. Uh, and th that's the P100 uh, filter that uh, is filters more than the uh, N95. Um, and uh, there's, there's also uh, the 3M, the low end 3M has an option for uh, 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 valveless, and that is uh, the 3M 600 series. Put on the mask again. That was some request from the audience to just put it on again. Sure. Okay, this is MSA 2900. The, um, the 3M has is actually the lowest price, but um, it wasn't the most comfortable from my point of view and not the easiest to put on, but it, it is the least expensive here. It's $11.50 for the mask and $6.28 for the P100 filters, those the, the pink ones that are uh, that have a high filtration rate. They also and it have, also... They also have an option for filtering out, uh, blocking the valve by filtering it. The filter is available for uh, uh, $10 from 3M directly, uh, or um, 
you can put on masking tape. They recommend a, a certain brand of masking tape that we'll have on the PowerPoint uh, uh, that you just uh, seal off from the inside, seal off the escape valve. Those are options for the escape valve. Um, I just wanted to make a point since uh, the three that I'm showing you are valveless, meaning uh, when you exhale, it goes through a filter. Uh, that would be a little bit more uh, protection in case you didn't realize that you were infected with COVID. Uh, you'd be protecting at the same level that you're protecting yourself uh, from other people. Uh, so that, that's the, the, the advantages of Unvalve is, um, like I said, in case you have COVID, but you don't know it, you're protecting other ones at the highest level of the, um, of the filters that you're using. Uh, the other one is, uh, it's potentially permitted on the airlines, but uh, that, that's debatable because they don't know about these valveless elastomerics, but everyone seems to be able to get on if you put, at the worst case, you have to put a, a surgical mask on top of the uh, elastomeric. Uh, the disadvantage of the valveless is it gets warm and moist on the inside. So if you're in a, a hot, humid climate, uh, that, that would be uh, uh, a very difficult to yeah. live with. In the Bay Area where I live, uh, I've worn these for about 90 minutes and it gets warm and moist, but it doesn't, other than that, it, it, it's, it's not unbearable and it doesn't, it doesn't slip off and it doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't break the seal and uh, no, not, no gross accumulation of, of water inside the mask. So that's just my experience. Um, okay, so. Uh, think, yeah, let's move on to Nicholas with his dentic then. Okay, I'm all done. Hi, everyone. So something with uh, elastomeric respirators as well is most of them are very easy to clean. You can even just use soap and water to uh, clean them. So, sorry. so the one you see here is the one from Dentec. It's called the Comfort X. They have both a version, the white versions for healthcare workers, but the same version can be made for the average person as well or the public. It's just a color difference. And this one doesn't have a valve, so it goes through the filter. And when you wash an elastomeric respirator, you want to make sure you don't get the filter wet because if the filter gets wet, it can lose that electrostatic charge. So that's very important. Um, Dentec was one of the first companies to be approved by NIOSH without an exhalation valve. And... It, they just actually sold 100,000 to the U.S. government, so you might see them in a lot more hospitals in the U.S. Uh, within the next few weeks. So that's going to be a big difference. And elastomerics, I forgot to mention at the start, were actually what the CDC was planning to put into widespread use at the start for pandemics, because they offer such, a, such an enormous cost savings that it's the most affordable type of respirator for everyone while also being the most protected. Um, so this is a quick one for... The Dentec. And I'll just quickly show the Dorma again. The Dorma 99 is a Canadian company. Um, this one was created by frontline doctors. And it's also good because you can see a little bit. This is probably not the best camera, but you can sometimes see the uh, lips as well. It's lightweight and it's very easy to breathe through. And this one is a little bit more different. So this one has just one filter instead of two. Uh, but it's lightweight, so it's comfortable for long periods of time. And as you can see, it's very easy to communicate with. And it also uses the N99 filter. So it does great, give great protection for both the wearer and those around them. Next person. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, uh, I'll just make a bit of a uh, change in the order because Sri, you have three to dis demonstrate and there I can go to you last. Maybe uh, I'll start with Amanda. Great. So um, I just wanted to show the Trebor RX. So this is a Canadian company. So Nicholas and I are both in Canada. And so we wanted to show some Canadian options. So I'll just put it on here. And so this one was actually created by um, uh, George Irwin, who owned Irwin Toys. And that's a, a well-known Canadian toy manufacturer. And so 
What I really like about this one is, um, you know, we have some ones that are, some that are called kind of hybrid, um, you know, semi disposable. So this one is supposed to be rated for 35 cleaning cycles and it costs $29 Canadian. Um, the filters you can get for a pack of 50 filters um, that last, each filter lasts eight hours and you can get a replacement pack of 50 filters for $29. So it's, a, it's a, an affordable option. And the best thing I like about it is that it's so low profile. So you can see here, really low profile. Um, my voice carries quite well. And I know that part of the, you know, I think sometimes people feel a bit nervous about wearing elastomerics because they look a bit conspicuous. And so the thing I really like about this one is that you can actually put a surgical mask over it and like you can hardly even tell that I'm wearing it. And so, you know, if you're just walking around the grocery store and you just don't want to really have people pay attention to you, you can put it on and it's really, it's really inconspicuous. And um, I think there were a couple of questions that people had um, asked prior to the chat that I think, or prior to the event that I think um, this speaks really well to. So um, I have uh, really fine curly hair that gets stuck in a lot of different straps. And so I've, I actually added this specific strap. So I think, you know, you can find ways to add straps to masks that as long as you're getting the seal is really good. And so this mask does come with the straps that are made from the same material as the mask. And so it does stick a bit in my hair and like you can see how it would get just stuck and rip pieces out. So I actually added this strap. And so, you know, you can do that as long as you, you make sure you get a good seal. And um, yeah, I just, I just really like this one really inconspicuous low profile. And then the other thing that I find a lot of really challenging for masks is that I have a really kind of interestingly shaped nose with a bump and then a like it's very um, straight down. And so this mask actually goes on top of that and seals right around my nose bridge and goes over that bump and then I get a really good seal. So it's a good option um, for um, if you just want something that's inconspicuous and you know fits all different kinds of faces. Okay, uh, Shri, moving on to you. Great. Uh, which will we start with? Envo first. Sorry? Oh, are you doing the Envo, Shri? Yes, Envo mask. Okay. This is the Envo mask. Uh, we'll put it on. It has uh, both uh, straps for the uh, top of the head as well as the around the neck. And so this is what it'll do. And, and it will, uh, one of the unique features of this was that it was designed with a, uh, originally it was a, derived from a product that had, it was a sleep apnea product. Uh, and so it was designed to be uh, for you to sleep with, like this. So, so people actually use it to sleep with uh, in hotels or anywhere they are or in airplanes. Uh, and, and it's very comfortable and, and kind of luxurious almost. And it, um, so you put it on and you get a good, uh, good seal. I actually wear it both above my ears to get the best seal. Uh, but you tighten it up with the strap, with the, um, there's this, uh, this, this uh, thing here, this um, spring-loaded uh, uh, device that you tighten up with and you, and then you wear it. Uh, initially, when they first started using it, they did, uh, it had an exhale valve. So uh, when I, the way I did is I put tape over it to start to fix that. So that way I, I could, I could go, uh, go in, into any environment without having to worry about the uh, exhalations. And later, uh, Envo Mask came up with the plug that they started using for, um, for this as well. So, it, uh, so now it ships with a plug that you can put inside the, uh, the mask. Uh, so once I was going, uh, I was flying to uh, uh, Boston and I, I wore the Envo mask and uh, no problem. I got off the flight and, and then on the return flight, the gate agent asked me, hey, you have a valve. Uh, you can't wear this. And I said, oh, no. Uh, and then they gave me a, they said, you know, uh, 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 here's a surgical mask in case you need, you know, you need to wear it uh, over the, uh, the so they, they, they gave, gave me a surgical mask. But ultimately there was no problem because there was, there was a valve. This, this, uh, this mask is a... Um, N95 approved by NIOSH. So that's another uh, kind of reassuring thing that it's been in, it tested by uh, the federal government and with all the stress tests that they put, put these things through. And that's a whole other topic to explain why that's important. Uh, and these, um, uh, these filters cost about a few dollars each. Uh, these are replacement filters. So the, the reuse body is reusable. The replacement filters are, uh, need to be replaced uh, every so often. Uh, that how often you need to replace is another big topic, uh, which we can co uh, cover at a later, a later point. But, uh, it, it's a, um, usually I replace it when it's soiled or when it's, uh, uh, I can't, and I, I never got to the point where I can't breathe through it. So uh, it's a little ambiguous. Uh, and, and I think the, uh, the one thing about it, sometimes the, uh, I've had to replace the body because the, 
silicone gel will uh, will break over a use of several uh, mo several months. So it, it is a little fragile. It's not like it's uh, industrial. Uh, it's not like a GVS or a uh, 3M, uh, but it, it is meant for industrial uses and it, it, it works really well. I believe. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to add, like I bought the Envil mask for my parents. They're considerably older. They have thinner skin. They bruise more easily. And so if they're going to have to wear a respirator for a really long time, this gel seal is so soft on the skin. Um, you know, if they have to go to the hospital, if they have to stay overnight, this is something because it's been designed on the basis of CPAP masks, it's something they could comfortably wear sleeping through the night as well. Um, and so if you have medical issues, if you're going into the hospital on a regular basis, if you, you know, are going to spend long hours in an emergency room having to stay overnight, this is a really comfortable option that's easy to put on, easy to take off um, and wear for long periods of time. If you have sensitive skin like I do, um, you know, that, that gel seal makes a, a pretty big difference. Um, so just some things to consider. Yeah, I think the importance of the seal cannot be underestimated because you can have the world's best filter in front of you, but if you don't have a good seal 100% around the face, you're not, the benefit is completely uh, uh, almost uh, negated. Uh, and so you, you do need to make sure that the seal is good. And if you look in the case of my, my face, I'm a little larger than what the Envo mask is designed for, I think. So you see it's pinching my, my cheeks. So I've actually had to, uh, I, I use other masks as well that are, that are better fitting for me. But th so this, this, for some faces, this may be too small. It comes in one size. Uh, for other faces, it may fit perfectly. So the important thing is to find the, the mask that fits your face and does, it, it does a really good job. And you, depending on how, where you work, how you're going to work and where you need protection, there could be some masks that are better than others because some are better for communication. Some don't have valves because that might be a trouble for your employer. And even hospitals might not let you wear sometimes the valves inside or like transportation. Yeah. Um, then there's also some that do have a clear front in the front so you could read lips for, let's say if you wanna teach a child uh, at a young age and that's important for their development is lip reading or even if you're working with somebody who's hard of hearing and you wanna make sure they could see your facial expression and lips, there are a lot of options that do yeah. have uh, clear windows as well. And I, yeah, the other thing about the Envil mask is all the, all, the only thing between your, your, your lips and the, and the outside is, is this filter. So the, 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 it's easy to talk through. There's a lot of good communication. Whereas some of the other industrial uh, uh, options like the um, uh, 3M or the GVS, they have a little more, um, uh, they may have more uh, uh, noise uh, uh, attenuation. Uh, Shri, I think we can move on to the okay. next uh, soft seal, I think. Sure. And we'll try to, uh, I mean, audiences who have put questions, uh, Amanda, Sarah, we'll try to uh, sort of postpone a bit till to the end, like when we had the Q&A session to try to answer your questions. Uh, Shri, please uh, go ahead. But this is the soft seal. It's also an N95 mask. It's not technically an elastomeric mask. It's a disposable N95 mask uh, approved by NIOSH. However, what's interesting about it is it has a silicone uh, seal which most elastomeric masks do not. So this is part of the disposable package is it has silicone seal. Uh, and it has two straps, the head straps that are adjustable. Uh, so it al is almost like an elastomeric mask. And I, now this is what I use every day because it fits me so well. Uh, and I use the aluminum uh, uh, um, nose bridge to, to tighten the, the seal. And it, it basically confines a nice perfect seal around my face. And I, I, in most situations I can't, you know, uh, it, it's probably the best fitting mask for me. Uh, and and it uh, you know I can tighten the head straps at the in the back and uh, it, it's also a single filter so you can hear me pretty well uh, and it's been uh, uh, proved you know pre pandemic it's been all just like the Envo mask it's been around for a long time uh, and and a very good option uh, and I think um, uh, what else would I say maybe the, the remote yeah. uh, canopy yes yeah, yeah, okay the canopy. sure. The Canopy is a very unique product uh, in that uh, it is a, and you need a number of different ways. Uh, most of the masks I've shown you today are uh, based on electrostatic charge. Uh, so they filter at the 0.3 micron uh, uh, particle size using uh, the electrostatic principles uh, invented by Dr. Sai. Uh, and 
Uh, this one is using a different kind of filter. It, is a, it looks like an automotive filter almost. Uh, it is using a different supply chain. It was designed to be free of the constraints of the supply chain uh, that were present with some of the other, uh, with a lot of these other N95 masks. Uh, and so it's designed to be available for hospital workers. And, and, and it also has another very unique feature, which is you can see through it. So it has a clear window. So you can see it through it and you can watch the, um, uh, the lip reading. So if I put it on like this and, uh, uh, and then I turn on the, um, you know, I have a strap on the middle, below my neck, my neck. And it will, um, you can see through. Uh, and this is just used by healthcare workers uh, currently. Uh, and I think they're in the, in the queue for being NIOSH approved, not getting NIOSH approved, but they do have test results, very extensive test results uh, available to demonstrate the, the, the abilities of the mask. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bigger, but it's, it's very usable. And uh, uh, you know, you, it, it forms a nice tight seal around your face with a, with a large uh, uh, silicone uh, uh, piece. And, and, and as you can see, uh, you know, if you look at I, I'm not, the lights, not exactly the best, but you can see the, the my, my lip, lips and uh, it's designed for facial communication. Uh, and, and so it, it um, uh, this is also a very good emerging option. It's also, it, I think it won an award in, in, uh, in or uh, in, in the uh, BARDA competition, or at least has a, uh, uh, some kind of recognition. Uh, yeah, place, it was a finalist in the President uh, Biden Challenge, and it also won the INDA Rise Innovation Award for the year's biggest innovation in non-wovens, and it also got accepted into the Stardex COVID Innovation Cohort as well. Great. Um, right. A couple of things, other things about the canopy, again, it has a pleated filter, so it has a deep pleated filter like all around the edge. Um, you've got the facial visibility. The straps are really unique. Um, in that they don't actually touch your face. So they kind of just sit right above your face. So, I mean, I have really sensitive skin. I do get breakouts because of masks. And usually it's around where the strap is causing friction on my face. And so uh, a respirator like this, where um, the straps aren't making contact with your face can make a really big difference if you do have uh, skin issues, rosacea, you know, lots of things uh, that can get aggravated by masks. Um, it also, there's just a lot of clearance between your face and the end of the mask. Um, so it's very comfortable on the inside. It doesn't get as sweaty as some of the other um, face pieces. Um, and I mean, I have this mask uh, I got this mask specifically for somebody who had a face that just didn't fit even with some of the larger sizes of other respirators and who also has Parkinson's. And so sometimes um, a lot of the other straps are a little bit too difficult for him to manage, but the adjustment on these straps are really easy. You really don't have to do much um, to adjust. The headband just goes over your head and the neck strap is, it, you, can, you can adjust it one-handedly if you need to. Uh, so there's some really nice design features with the canopy. Um, it's a really well thought out design that doesn't exist with some of the other. Uh, so I know it looks clunky, but um, if you have a user that has specific needs, um, this mask really addresses a lot of different um, points that um, improve that have improved access. Um, that really yeah, think, uh, the, the other uh, couple of things to mention about this is it, um, it it's very much more breathable I find than a lot of other masks. Yes. Uh, the the uh, the test results say it's five millimeters pressure drop uh, or something uh, close to that, uh, and, and so I, I find it uh, very easy to breathe through. And um, the other uh, important thing to note is. It's considered MR safe, uh, which means that it, 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 it's supposed to be safe to be used inside of an MRI machine or a scan because none of the parts are made of metal. Uh, and, and so many of these masks, for example, the soft seal, I, I don't know if it's MR safe or not, but it has an aluminum uh, uh, piece on it. Uh, the uh, Envo mask, the rest of the mask is free of metal, except for this little, uh, uh, yep. this, this little thing here has a metal spring in it. So, you just have to watch out for uh, with these masks, which ones have metal or don't when you're going into a, uh, a, sc a scan or a, a you know, healthcare environment. That's a really nice point, Shri. Uh, 
I think we are done with all the demonstrations. We have been answering some of the questions from audiences uh, and attendees, if you have any other questions we could talk about, or maybe there was a couple of uh, areas where we could uh, take the discussion a bit further. One was regarding when do we replace the filter? And the other question that came up was, how do I select a mask that is appropriate for me? So I try to answer it that because that's why we have this kind of diverse panel who are using different masks and we try to give you a demonstration of our different face shapes, weird shapes, weird noses, whatever we have, and try to help you a bit about uh, gazing that what could work well for you. Uh, but maybe others, uh, you guys also have some good advice for these people. Because like once you buy one, it's difficult to exchange. Yeah, totally. True. I think one of the great points that we mentioned, we were you know chatting about this prior to our session, and one of the, the main things that I think I really look for is anything that has a lip like this. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of like a, you know, a sealing valve and then you have an extra bit of this lip that really seals onto your face. And so, you know, looking for something like that, like um, this is the, this is the Envo mask for children. And so I just thought I would bring this in to show you because it's got that silicone lip as well. And so I, I find that those models seem to be more reliable for fit for a lot of different face types than something like this. This is the um, Open Standard Industries mask. And I didn't demo it because it, it doesn't really seem to seal around my face very well. And there's no lip here. So, so it just is relying on the, the pressure onto your face to seal it. And so I find that that's not as reliable for a lot of different face types. So, you know, I, I mentioned in the chat too that the GBS, you know, all of us or almost everyone on the panel already had one. And I, we really like it because it does have that, that lip there. So, I mean, that's kind of one thing I think that you can look for. Um, I find that with the sizing that, um, you know, if I measure the sizing based on what it says on, it, on the, the chart, um, um, it's, it's usually better to go a bit smaller if, if you're kind of in between because then you get a better seal. That's what I've heard. Um, but, you know, I don't want to, you know, say go smaller for sure. But like, if you're kind of in doubt, you just want to make sure that you, you're going to get a really good seal. So smaller is usually better than bigger because then it will go over your face and you won't get a good seal. And others, I'm sure, have stuff to add about that. I think one thing I would add is um, I personally, uh, my first priority is to look for the uh, NIOSH approval uh, because there are certain, uh, uh, as many aspects of the NIOSH approval that are, um, that are important for uh, the, the filters have been stress tested. The uh, fit has been tested to some extent. Uh, and there's, it's a very rigorous test, even though it's, uh, it's uh, manufacturers aren't able to get the approval now because of the, the, the queue is backed up and that doesn't necessarily speak to the manufacturer's product. Uh, there, there is some advantage to having this NIOSH approval. Uh, and, and so I, I look for that as a first step. And then apart from that, all the other aspects too, which are the, uh, the fit and the filtration and the um, breathability uh, uh, and durability are, are, are very important uh, aspects. And Canadian okay, manufacturers like, like yeah. um, Trevor RX, Precision, ADM, uh, Prescient, and Dorma, for example, they're approved by Health Canada. And Health Canada does have the same stringent requirements as NIOSH, and they actually go a little bit further. So if it does mm. have Health Canada approval, you can feel safe with that as well. That's great. Uh, so I'll try to answer a couple of questions that have uh, come up. I'm sorry, I got it. Uh, the one was regarding wearing with glasses. Am I audible to you guys? So, am I audible or? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, sorry. So there was one question wearing with glasses. Uh, it's not perfect, but as you see, a lot of us do have glasses and we wear them. So it seems to work out. And there are some that are built so so you can easily wear glasses with it as well. So there, there are, there's over 20 manufacturers. We only listed maybe 10, 12. Uh, Clean Air Crew is a website where you can find different manufacturers. Patient Know How is another great place uh, where there's reviews. That's uh, Sri's website. Um, Aaron Collins, Mask Nerd, he's reviewed thousands of disposable and disposable masks as well as elastomerics. So th there's a lot of different places where you can look at to find like maybe what's right for you because what's right for one person might not be right for another. It, it depends on the environment and the way you're gonna use the, the respirator as well as maybe your, hist your health history as well because you might need more protection. And the other great thing is that elastomerics is 
especially with 99 or 100 filters, they help with uh, pollen, wildfire smoke, air pollution. So even after the pandemic is over, you could still, you know, if there's a big wildfire season, especially with climate change drying up and there's more fires than ever before on average, you could still protect your lungs. If you have COPD as well, there's maybe, it might be better, for example, to use a respirator that has uh, 95 filters for easy breathability. I have asthma and I'm suffering COPD as well and I don't have trouble, but maybe another person with COPD would. So if you do have severe breathing conditions, it would be advisable to speak to your doctor first before uh, using these. But uh, even with breathing conditions, most people won't have any issues wearing them for hours at a time. Or I, I've worn them for eight to 12 hours a day as well, doing labor. So it, uh, it can easily be worn all day. You know, I'd like to uh, add to that, what uh, Nicholas pointed out about the, a um, uh, few things about the glasses. I find personally, for me, uh, the, the soft seal and the Envo mask are, are easier to wear with glasses than some of the other options we discussed. Uh, it, it, the other ones still work with my glasses, but I do see that they, you know, my glasses don't sit as on, on my uh, nose bridge as, as, as these other two options. Uh, and second, the wildfire uh, aspect is, is quite important because uh, as we, with, with rising temperatures and increasing um, uh, uh, risk of, of wildfires, we're now starting to see cross country effects where uh, wildfires in, in the Northwest uh, ended up getting, uh, you know, impacting the air quality inside uh, in, in in New York City and Boston and, and the East Coast, uh, which was uh, even more so than San Francisco uh, to date uh, this season. Uh, and so it, it's amazing how it all uh, uh, connects together. And, uh, and the, these masks are just as good for uh, preventing inhalation of PM 2.5 particles, uh, which are uh, in fact uh, carcinogenic and cause all kinds of uh, uh, near short-term effects for, heart, uh, for the heart and for, uh, for the lungs. Uh, and, and so it, it's an important thing to, uh, to keep in mind. And, and the other thing for those of you who are in the yeah. Oh, I'll just sorry. add to that that it's also good for something called ultra, ultra fine particles, so particles under 0.1 microns. Mm -hmm. These are sort of the new health threat that we're starting to work on or starting to realize that they can be quite bad for the body. And even mm -hmm. if they are 0.1 microns, so less than the most penetrating particle size, the filters do pretty well filtering them out. That's so, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think the other uh, just one more thing: uh, the uh, those of you on the who take the subway. Uh, there's a lot of uh, studies now that there's a studies that have come out showing that the um, especially in the New York subway, some cer certain stations, there's a lot of brake dust or other types of uh, my, uh, aerosol dust that that's present on the subways. And so uh, it's useful to these, these can be useful to prevent you from inhaling those as well. And if you're immunocompromised as well, let's say you're going through chemo treatment or whatever, uh, it'll help give you kind of like a immune system when you wear it. So if you're worried about catching a cold, that could maybe be fatal for you, but not for the average person, you could wear it to the grocery store and be protected. So you'll, you, your health will be a lot better, but there's also a lot of reusability. So in H1N1, some hospitals use elastomerics, stored them for 10 years, took them back out for COVID, and now they're using them for COVID. And you can use a lot of places are reusing the same ones for years at a time. So if Nicholas, it, you buy uh, 15, you can answer one of the questions that has come up that I'm curious about the filters that were mentioned lasting for one year. Don't they get saturated? I'm not sure what saturated means, but do they uh, need to be tested for a couple of days? It, it depends on the environment. So for example, in a hospital environment, what the CDC started recommending when they started using them in 1996 is an annual filter change for the ones they were using. So let's say you change it on July 12th, then the next year on July 12th, you, fill, you change it out unless it becomes damaged, soiled, so dirty, or it's hard to breathe through, then you switch it out right away. But you also have to look at the manufacturer because some manufacturers, they're only good for sometimes a few weeks or a few months, depending on the filter. Um, so you might need to switch it out a little bit more often. So, yeah. but 3M, uh, Honeywell, I believe like Dentec, most of the major manufacturers, it is, you can get a year out of the filter. So you could pay maybe 15, $20, uh, for the mask and then five dollars for a filter so that's 25 dollars for a year of the best protection available and then the next year you're just switching out the filter so you're paying five dollars for the next year and that's why so many hospitals are now starting to slowly trans uh transition to elastomerics and that's why after h1n1 the cdc came up with a plan to put elastomerics into widespread use during pandemics more for the sustainability because they were expecting an n95 shortage which occurred with past pandemics as well yeah, I think the filter oh. reusability is a very big topic, and there's a, each filter manufacturer has a different answer to that, and each the actual uh, results are going to vary based on your own usage. Your mileage will vary, so to say. 
Uh, and it, it's a, uh, uh, I, th I think there, there's some filters that will last a very long time and in fact could last a long, lot longer than their manufacturer rated uh, uh, things. But there com it comes with some, some uh, level of uncertainty around what actually is happening. So there, it, it, it's a open question, it's a kind of an open research question as well as to how, how to best utilize these filters. But uh, uh, in, the in the common case, it, you can use them quite, uh, quite long. Yeah. And when you're not I using them, you should store them in a dark, yeah. dry environment? So Nicholas, that's a good question because uh, a person has asked the question, are there known lifespans for storage and use? So for both of you, I guess the storage lifespan would be specified by the manufacturer? Yeah, it depends on the manufacturer and the material. Uh, because some can be used for years at a time and then stored away and then take them out years later. So there, it depends on the manufacturer. So it's all, they're all a little bit different. Uh, but like I said, like some of them use them for H1N1 and then stored them for 10 years and then took them out for COVID. So it shows how, how some are easy to store and they actually take up a lot less room. So if you're using disposable, let's say you're paying a dollar for an N95 and then you might need hundreds of N95s for the year. You're spending hundreds of dollars uh, for disposable PPE that's going to take up room when you could just take one respirator at a fraction of that cost and you could use it for a lot more and also have higher protection than the N95 as well. Yeah, I think on the question of storage, that's a really great question. Uh, for example, I, I think Envo Mask told me that they, uh, the, the, their filters can be and masks can be stored for 10 years. Uh, and, and so they can be, you know, you can, organizations can purchase these and keep them for as long as, it, you know, for that, there's like a, the, the manufacturers specify a storage level. One thing to keep in mind, uh, and I think someone may have mentioned this, is that the uh, exposure to light uh, also degrades the filter material. So you can't necessarily you have to store them in a dark uh, uh, area, not in a uh, uh, with exposure to uh, uh, to light, because that that may degrade degrade the electrostatic charge, uh, and and it can be, but they can be used for quite quite a bit yeah. of time. And if you're washing uh, the last American, if the filters can be removed, you should remove the filters. And if they can't be removed, be careful not to get liquid on them because that liquid will ruin the electrostatic charge as well. And, and there's a lot of work that's been done during the pandemic on filter reuse uh, by uh, Dr. Sai and others. Uh, it's been, it became a, when there was a shortage of N95 uh, materials. That, that, so there's a lot of research that's been going on. Again, it's not totally uh, cut and dry, but uh, it's important to consider. Uh, I'll let I'd like that. to answer one of the questions uh, um, at the top uh, it was regarding the, or maybe it's gone, it was regarding the, the straps. Uh, yeah, that is, this all there. It's still there. Okay. Can I see the uh, back, of the, see the back worn, of the mask? Yeah. I'm concerned yeah, about yeah. straps. So let me show, let me show my mask. Difficult. And, um, okay. And here's the back of the strap. And so what you can see, I guess I can't show it very well. But this is fairly typical. There's one bottom strap, and they're both adjustable, that goes around the back of your neck. And then the top strap tends to have two things in the back that will prevent the top from slipping down. So um, it, it seems like it works to me uh, in both uh, holding, holding it tight and holding it from slipping down. So hope, hopefully that answers the question. Any other comments? So yeah, most, somebody, somebody was asking about um, if a security guard asked them to remove it because it has the exhalation valve and they don't know. Uh, so that's very common. Even a lot of government or government experts don't realize that the CDC had actually shown that the exhalation valves, even uncovered, provide better source control than surgical masks. Um, so just if they offer you a surgical mask, you know what, instead of fighting with them, it might be easier to just put the surgical mask over the valve when you're going into that area for a little bit. Um, if it does remove for some, the odd person it, adding the surgical mask might make it a little bit less breathable, but it shouldn't be too much of a concern. Uh, but until there's more awareness by the government, because the government hasn't spoken about their, uh, CDC exhalation valve studies. Um, so they sometimes say to cover the valve. So it, it, it's going to be hard to convince these people because they're not going to go and look at the studies when you tell them, you know, the CDC's proved these um, because a lot of people will just say one thing or another. Um, so yeah, it might I be mean, hard. So just, just be ready to put like a surgical mask on top of the valve if they, if they ask you to. Yeah, that's an important point. And the CDC has come out saying that, you know, people should not be prevented from using uh, masks with valves uh, for, for protection uh, in, in these environments, even though the CDC says it, and everyone may not pick up on that. 
uh, and, and it's so it's, 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 there's still this idea that valves are bad or something. And so I, when I was on a flight, uh, they, they, the, the gate attendant stopped me and said, hey, you have an Envo mask with a valve uh, and, and you need to, uh, you can't use that. And I said, well, it has a, it has a valve plug, so it's, it should not be a problem. There's a white plastic valve plug here. And, and they, they gave me a surgical mask anyway, and that solved the problem so that if anybody asked about it, I could put the surgical mask on. Uh, so One you thing, can. So I'm, I'm just going to make a point about long-term use uh, from people who, I mean, I've been using mine for several years now, and I know that some of the older designs seem clunkier, but, you know, when with regular use and wear, you're usually not going to see like the entire um, respirator unusable. You're going to see wear in certain areas, so whether it's the strap or it's a valve or it's the actual face piece. And some of the benefits of the industrial ones is that you can just replace that specific part. You don't have to then go and buy an entirely new mask. So if you're on a budget, and these are generally cheaper to begin with, um, if you're looking at to buy something that you're going to be using uh, for years on end, you know, it, it, it's a more sensible buy uh, because those parts are easily available. They're pretty cheap. Um, and they're, they're designed to be a lot more robust than some of the newer designs that were made specifically for healthcare settings only. Um, yeah. And, and there, I also oh, yeah, forgot because, uh, yeah. some of, some of um, like full face and the odd maybe half face will have what's called um, speech diaphragm, which helps improve the uh, audio aspect. But you can also see, even though it has like an exhalation valve here, I'm not sure how easy it would be to see this. It doesn't actually, it does have to go through a lot of material. So this one would be maybe easier to show somebody that it, it doesn't just get exposed to the air, which is a common assumption. Nicholas, good uh, question for you that sometimes manufacturers say that you can only use them for every 30 hours or one month and then replace the filters. What about that? I guess that's for hospitals. Uh, it depends on the environment as well. So if you're working in a dustier environment, those filters might pick, might uh, accumulate a little bit of dust, so it might become a little bit harder to breathe through. But if you're just going to a grocery store, if you're just going to the subway or hospital or work, it shouldn't be too dusty. Then you could use it for as long as possible. And you might be able to get a few extra days or a few extra uses, but it is best to follow the manufacturer's recommendation if you, if you can. I think on that point, that's a very confusing point, and I, I, it's caused a lot of confusion during the pandemic. And I, it's important to uh, recognize that, and that you know the manufacturers' ratings are very strictly defined based on what they can say legally, based on their you know um, uh, their their approvals. They can't go beyond what they've been approved for, uh, and that's you know for the understandable. Uh, well, the CDC, on the other hand, has has put out uh, uh, web pages saying that elastomerics can be used up to a year. Uh, and so it, it's a little bit of a, you know, a confusing thing to kind of reconcile these two three points. And I think there's a, there's a reasonable basis to believe that you can, you can use these, you know, uh, for quite a bit of time, uh, because as long as the air is, uh, you know, as the, the filtration is, is, is still breathable. Uh, and so um, that's why it's a little bit of a gray area. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with it myself, but everybody has to make their own uh, assessment as to how comfortable they are uh, extending the life beyond what the manufacturer says. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I can, I can speak a little bit on that too, because I have used these for about a decade. Um, the manufacturer recommendations are often based on, um, especially with like 3M and stuff where people use these in industrial jobs when they're working around dangerous chemicals and stuff. A lot of the time they'll say, you know, replace the filter after 40 hours, assuming that everyone is going to, you know, wear them eight hours a day for work and then replace it the next week and their manufacturer and their, um, employer usually pays for it. Um, but I'm so, I'm so, <laughs> my lungs are so sensitive to perfume and smoke that I can tell if the filters are not working. I've used these, I've stretched it out for months and months and I wear them you know, re repeatedly, often for hours at a time, I change them whenever I notice that it starts getting more difficult to breathe through them. Um, but okay, they uh, still, like the filters question. still work though, then they'll still filter out the smoke, they'll still filter out the perfume, they'll still filter out COVID. It just gets harder to breathe as the filters start getting clogged. And you will notice if it gets really, really difficult to breathe, you should just change the filters. And that that's usually the issue is that once, once you breathe through it a lot. 
how often do you clean the respirator? So again, just to satisfy this is the audience question, and just to let all of you know, you do not clean the filters. You can clean the rest of the elastomeric. So yeah. Question for all of you: How do you maintain your elastomeric, or what's your cleaning routine? So it depends. So it depends. There's cleaning and there's disinfection. So if I'm going to a hospital area kind of thing or an area where there is a known outbreak, I'm definitely going to be wearing my elastomeric respirator because it has the extra protection. But then I might want to disinfect it. Now, I don't disinfect it if I'm just going to the grocery store, or just going to a quick, you know, in and out place kind of thing, or going to see a friend or going somewhere because it's not it's the risk isn't as high but it, it, you know what it is safer to disinfect every time you use it as for cleaning i maybe clean it once a month but if it does get dirty i'll clean it right away my answer to that is um i i never really have to clean my respirators uh for whatever reason uh you know I, they, they they're the other thing is that there's a lot of work on these uh um uh, uh, how long COVID survives on these, on these surfaces. And, and, you know, one of the methods that came up with for, for is, is uh, drying out. So if you let the, the respirator, once you're done with it, I, I keep it in my, uh, in my box, but I keep it open so that it dries out overnight. Uh, and so just drying out, uh, get, uh, you know, takes care of a lot of the, the problems. So you, Cause if you keep it inside a box and close it up like this, yep. that may be a bad idea that then it, like all kinds of bacteria can grow and so on. And so when I, what, I, what I do find is sometimes the filters will start to get dirty and that's when I, I, I start, you know, I'll change the filter uh, uh, you know, so that I don't have to deal with that. But, uh, and so the, uh, it's important to, I, I, what best thing I do is just replace the filter to clean it. And then yeah, I'll just I mean, add so that. I, oh, okay. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that, I mean, I, I think some of us are like more uh, prone to getting breakouts for masks too. So um, yep. I just like to wash it with like a, like a disinfectant um, wipe or something. And then I, and then I just wipe it out with a damp cloth just so uh, the disinfectant isn't still on there to irritate my skin, but then it also gets rid of any bacteria from exhalation that would cause like a, like some, some acne or something. And, yeah. And one um, thing I forgot, sorry, go ahead. Exactly. the. Sorry. I'm just going to say it. I do exactly the same thing as Amanda does because I sweat a lot in my mask. There's a lot of condensation inside my mask. So when I take it off, a quick disinfectant wipe, a wipe down um, with, a, with um, a damp cloth, even, even an alcohol wipe, you know, if you don't have a disinfectant wipe on you is, is fine. And then maybe, you know, every so often I will dismantle everything and clean everything out. Um, and here, especially, we you know we have a four or five month long monsoon season. So I have to be really, really careful about making sure that my mask airs out before I store it away. Otherwise I'm going, I, I have seen mold on my face piece. Um, and it's, it's one of the reasons why I also like um, masks like the 3M that have the, the inhalation valve because I'm not breathing directly onto my filters. Whereas if you look at the Envo um, or the GVS, um, here, I'll grab the GVS. The GVS, the, the filter is exposed to my breath on the inside. And so, you know, during the monsoon months, et cetera, this isn't going to be the kind of respirator that I'm going to want to use if I'm going to wear it daily. Uh, because my mask is just, the, the filter itself is being exposed to uh, yeah. um, so much okay. more organic yeah. material than it otherwise yeah. would be. So yeah, and just oh yeah, just to add that the uh, the manufacturers all have their uh, specified protocols for washing them, and that's probably the best that practice is to use uh, their their protocols, uh, whatever they happen to be. One thing I forgot to mention too is you also don't want to have facial hair where it's going to seal. So if you have a goatee, you oh, can have a goatee important. as long as it goes inside, uh, or you know whatever facial hair floats your boat as long as it doesn't have the seal. Some people might be able to have like a mustache depending on the respirator little goatee some people just shave it where it seals uh but that's why it's important because it needs to seal to your face so the air actually does go through the filters that's actually such an important point to reiterate because um you know we haven't invented technology in 2021 that can overcome facial hair uh it's important to shave and, and to make sure that the at least the parts that are contacting the seal uh are are are, are, are have clean are clean shaven to get uh, because otherwise it, the the, fa the hair will create gaps and, and the air can flow through those gaps and and, and so that's that's the important uh, thing i mean a little bit of hair i guess it's probably okay you know like if it, it, it over the, net, the course of a day or two but 
uh, beyond that, it's important to keep a very tight seal uh, to the face. Yeah. That being said, it will still give you better protection than a surgical mask. So if somebody says, yeah. don't wear that because you have facial hair, it's still going to give you much, oh, much better, better protection. Much better. Yeah. It's all relative. Yeah. It's a okay, it, good question. Adding fabric over the filters, does it have any known issues? So I guess there will be a bit of extra resistance in the breathing, but apart from that, I guess no known issues. Yeah. And even the breathing resistance, it should be pretty minimal. Yeah. Yeah. You mean having, adding a surgical mask over the... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're it's asked to put this on, pretty yeah. It's not as loose fitting mask. for the mat. It's it's not that much, uh, but I mean it is incrementally. But uh, okay. yeah, a couple of and, and you don't want to. Oh, sorry. Before I forget, and you don't want to put something underneath uh, the yeah. last yeah. American like a surgical mask because that could ruin the seal. Yeah. So whatever you put on, put it over the last American. You want mm. the best fit to be closest to your skin. After that, whatever you want to put on, you can put on or if someone insists. A couple of bookkeeping tasks. Uh, I have put in a couple of websites, which I really like in terms of getting information on what mask I can choose. We have a variety of mask options on there. So one is the Clean Air Crew. The other is Special Know How, which is uh, sort of Special Know How is from Sri. Thanks to him for collecting a lot of masks, a lot of information in there. And the other thing is, yes, this uh, is being recorded and uh, and then I, I, I guess we are not sure exactly where we'll be putting it up, but we will be putting it up. And so and we'll be informing you as to where we put it up, maybe on likely on YouTube, I guess. Oh, and another bonus to reusables versus disposable is it also helps seal it better when you're doing physical movement. So there is a study yep. by JAMA where it showed healthcare workers performing occupational CPR, which is pretty much every day now because of COVID and how bad everything is. They have a 28%, 28% of the people in the study, uh, they lost their seal while doing this CPR movement. While with elastomerics, nobody lost their seal. So it also gives you that extra protection for physical labor, uh, depending on what you're going to be using. That could be the extra protection as well. So if you're looking, if you're going to be doing a lot of movement with your head, especially quick movement, uh, the elastomeric is going to give you that extra protection for the extra seal as well. Yeah, I mean, I wear mine outdoors a lot because there's a lot, I'm, I'm in India, I'm in Mumbai, there's a lot of ambient air pollution just outside. So this isn't just indoor safety for me, this is outdoor safety too. And I work with dogs, I have six dogs, they're jumping on me, they're pawing at me, there's, you know, there's a lot of movement and I feel really secure um, with the, the, the fact that I can fit the mask so well up to my face. I don't have to fidget with it when I'm doing all of these things where even with an N95, even with the head straps, you know, the seal does kind of budge a bit. Um, and so there's there's that. Uh, it also feeds into um, filter use. Um, so I know that in the winter months when air pollution is really, really high, uh, I'm gonna have to replace my filters a lot sooner uh, because they're gonna get clogged with PM10 um particles which are larger particles versus um the rest of the year when it's not that bad and so you 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 learn as you use the filter in terms of what works but in general um with most of these filters um they'll actually work a little better once they've been used a bit uh versus when they're brand new so don't stress yourself out about uh yeah, that's a good know, point like do, do i really if you're need to replace it difficulty breathing it yeah if you're feeling difficulty breathing it just means that filter has slowly clogged up but when a filter clogs up the flow reduces filtration stays same or even better so you're still quite protected from whatever you want to protect against bb particles covid whatever it is you are still quite protected uh, but just replace it because you also need air to breathe that's the point. I mean, it's not going to lower your protection. It just lowers the flow rate. Yeah, I think uh, one, one point I'd like to add is uh, in the Q&A, I saw questions about head straps versus uh, uh, ear loops. Uh, and I think uh, the, the reason people use head straps, it may be more inconvenient in some ways, but it also gives you a much tighter seal. Uh, so a lot of masks, for example, like the Envo mask, I really need to tighten it very tightly to get that seal. Same thing with the, um, the, 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 uh, the soft seal. Or, or the GVS, I mean, if I have to, to get the real seal, I actually have to tight, use those head straps you know, to their maximum extent to really tighten it. Uh, otherwise you can get air leaks and, and all kinds of, uh, um, uh, the last thing you want is a leak. Mm -hmm. 
And you could also, when you put it on, like depending on the ones you use. So once it has a seal, you put your hands over the filters and try and breathe in and out. And then you could see if it does seal. Like if you can't breathe in, then you know it has a good seal and then you don't feel the air coming out kind of thing through the gaps as well. Yeah, or eyeglass, um, you know, um, fogging. And stuff. One mm -hmm. thing about seal checks is if you have small hands that can't fully cover the seal, putting Ziploc baggies over your hands and then using that to check your seal um, will give you a much better um, seal check because you'll be able to cover the filter properly. It's a lot easier if you just put uh, Ziplocs on your hands to do a seal check. Has anybody demoed a seal check? I can do one really quick here. So, yeah, I mean, you have, so I like to make sure that um, it's kind of over my nose here, and then I want to tighten it here. And then I like to just tuck, you know, my normal mouth movements. I'm going to have like up, down, like this. And so you feel a good seal. And then once you feel like it's really situated well, it's tight, you wanna put your hands over the filter and see that. And you wanna feel if there's any air around any part of this. So I felt a bit of air here, so I'm gonna resituate it and then feels pretty good. And then I'm not, I'm not really getting anything like that. So, and then I can put on my glasses for the glasses wearers. Um, if, you, if you feel, if you get any fogging, you know that that's also going to be something where you need to make sure the seal around your nose is good because that's air coming in and out. So, and so it's, yes. Yeah, and then I feel pretty good. So it's kind of situated where right here, I know that it's not gonna, if I open my mouth, I don't feel it gapping here and I don't feel any air around here. Yeah, so, you know, if you're wearing a mask like this, where you can, I mean, you, Visually, it looks like my hands are fully cupping uh, the filters, but when I'm actually doing the seal test, you know, there's gaps between my fingers, and so I'm not getting a good cup. But if you use, uh, okay. this is a really big Ziploc, but if you use a Ziploc like this, it's a lot easier to cover a filter to do a seal test. Um, the other thing. Uh, with glasses clogging up, um, just just to be mindful that if you're wearing a respirator that has an open exhale valve, especially one that's on the front like this, your glasses can also seal up from the exhalation that's mm -hmm. coming out of the exhale valve and not necessarily from a leak at your nose bridge. So just something to be mindful of. And, and there's uh, some menu. Sorry, go ahead. And, and there's some manufacturers also, uh, our um, design reality was bought out by full support in the UK and there's, they actually, with their filters, they just have a switch. So you flip the switch and once the switch is uh, uh, flipped, you won't be able to breathe if it has like a seal. So it makes it a lot easier since it's just like a quick little flip. Mm -hmm. Okay, that all was great. We don't have any pending questions right away. Thank you for the attendance because we are running a bit over time. So unless there are any other questions, maybe we can call it a day. Oh. The attendees, someone just raised their hand among the attendees. Do we have any other, mm -hmm. oh, there's a question that I typed out. Oh, just thanks. <laughs> so that, okay, I'll take that question. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for attending. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, everyone. It was great to chat with yep. you. And Thank you for, for attending watching. and hope you guys spread the word as well. And yes, mm -hmm. uh, we'll try to get this uploaded into some platform and uh, share it with all of you. Yeah, and uh, we'll put our like uh, usernames from YouTube. So if you or sorry, Twitter. So if you need have any further questions, you can also reach directly mm -hmm. out to us as well. Okay. All right. Bye, Thank everyone. Everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Dana, Dana. That is the organizer. Thank you, Dana, for getting this together so fast.